Hello. Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It has been so long since I have seen you guys, and I am so excited to be back and to be streaming and to be talking to you about some amazing board games. My name, of course, is Jessa Blackthorn. This is Much Ado About Gaming, the WizKids board game streaming show. We talk about all things WizKids board games, all the great new releases, all of the great releases that you may have missed, and I am so excited for today's show. Of course, we have my lovely assistant right here to my left, and that is Noodles, our penguin mascot. He is going to take over the world one day, and I will be right there at his side. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well. How's everyone doing today? I see some people in the chat asking about Heroclix. We won't be talking about Heroclix on today's show. This is a board game show. However, keep an eye on our social media as we always talk about Heroclix on there, and that's where you'll want to be to get the latest updates on all things Heroclix. Um, I'm so excited to be back. I apologize. I know it's been a little bit of a... I started a little late today. There were some technical issues we were dealing with. Uh, but, you know, we are live, we are here, we are ready to chat, and we have some cool stuff to talk about today. Uh, so first, we're gonna start up by giving you some WizKids board game news. That sound effect is so fun. I love it. Uh, so yes, of course, uh, first piece of board game news that I want to talk about is our board game Jinja. Jinja is a colorful worker placement game set in ancient Japan where you are building shrines all across Japan. And Jinja actually released last week. It's available now. How exciting is that? How cool is that? It's a great little game. It plays two to five players, ages 12 and up. And it plays in 60 minutes, so it's a nice quick game for game night. It's a good, like, kick off your game night kind of game. And it is $49.99, so definitely check that out. I mean, look at this art. It's absolutely stunning. I, I I can't get over how breathtaking the art is for this game. It's such a fun little game. I've played it once. Uh, I want to play it again now that I kind of have a grasp on the rules because it's one that, you know, I only really had one chance to play it with people, you know, given everything that's going on. But that will be changing very soon. I'll be able to play with all my friends again, and this is one we are really excited to be able to get more plays out of because it's it's fun, it's cool, it's colorful. I'm I'm a big person who loves a lot of colors and a lot of you know different stuff going on with a game, and this one really kind of scratches that itch for me. I, I think it's great, I think it's wonderful. Uh, it is Jinja, you can pick it up at your friendly local game store or online today, it is available now. So definitely check it out. Mike, Noodles is here. He's hiding from this game because I guess the foxes scare him. Because there are, of course, Kitsune, which are uh, Japanese fox uh, creatures. And Noodles is scared of them. So he's he's not hanging out in this, uh, in this slide. But he will be back momentarily. He's also, you know, not a big news penguin. He, he likes playing the games. He doesn't like the news. Um, yes, so moving on uh, from Jinja. Again, I... Uh, the art just caught my eye again, and it's so pretty. <laughs> so definitely check it out. Um, another piece of really cool news that we have is that the Fantasy Realm scoring app is now available. It is a free web app that you can use on your computer. So I'm gonna show it to you really fast so you can see what it does. It is so cool. You just go to uh, wizkids.io slash FR app and make sure you capitalize it like that because the way that um, the shortened link works, you want to make sure you capitalize it that way. Uh, but it'll take you right to this page where you can score your Fantasy Realms game. So it has all of the different, you know, uh, cards in there with the different suits and it will actually calculate the score for you. Uh, so if you're using an ability, you can actually, you know, change the suits of the cards if that's what the ability does. It lets you basically live score your game of Fantasy Realms, which if you're anything like me, which I'm terrible at math and all of that kind of like keeping track of different stuff like that at the end of the game, this is something you're gonna love. It's gonna be a great resource for you. And it even has the uh, cursed items included as well as the, um, words are hard. The buildings, outsiders, and undead that are included in the Cursed Horde expansion, which is also available now! 
So see, it's perfect. It's all going on. It's great. And definitely something you're going to want to check out. Uh, the Fantasy Realms scoring app. If you love Fantasy Realms, it's right perfect for you. Uh, it's going to be super useful, super helpful. You're definitely going to get a lot out of this. I mean, you can see it has all the cursed items in it and it's super easy to use super straightforward even has a quick easy reset button so at the end of your game or at the end of you scoring your stuff you know you you can just reset it and have your opponent do it and it's a plus it's it's awesome love it so much um so that is the fantasy realms scoring app as well as like i said that cursed horde is available now see noodles is back now he just he didn't want to hear the news today, I guess. Um, but yeah, so definitely check both of those things out. Jinja, the Fantasy Realms scoring app, and of course, Fantasy Realms the Cursed Horde, which is an all-new expansion for Fantasy Realms, and I'm going to be talking a little bit more about it uh, in a few minutes. But yeah, now let's move on to our feature presentation. But before I do that, I just want to say again, I'm sorry for not streaming for like a month and a half. Uh, as I've mentioned before on this show, uh, I moved fairly recently and unpacking has kind of taken a little bit longer than we expected and I was finishing up unpacking and I was going to stream last week, if you noticed on my Twitter, the underscore Blackthorn, uh, I was fully committed to streaming last Tuesday and then uh, a bunch of stuff fell down all right in this streaming area that I have and that was Tuesday morning and I was like, I guess I'm not streaming today. but. I cleaned it all up and now we're here and we're streaming and it's super fun and also I'll talk about it at the end of the show but I will provide an update on that bedazzled red slod if you were at um, the paint night event last week on Friday with V. Uh, they were painting the Dungeons and Dragons uh, Nulzer's Marvelous Miniatures red slod using those amazing paint night kits and I had was hanging out in the comments and I promised that I would bedazzle a red slod and I will have an update for you on that at the end of the show, so keep watching. But now let's move on to our feature, 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 feature presentation. Ah, so today's show is really fun. Um, I decided that, you know, I've been gone for so long with the stream, I thought I would do something kind of fun and interesting for my first show back, and I decided that today I'm going to talk about my personal top five favorite games from WizKids. I, you know, I work for WizKids, I've been here a lot, um, I've played a lot of our games, I've tried a lot of different games from us, games that, you know, I didn't think I would enjoy, that I've really enjoyed on playing them. Issa, hello, welcome, thank you for watching the show, thank you for hanging out. If you have any questions, please type QUESTION in all caps, and I will try to answer anything that I can. Um, but I absolutely, you know, love some of our board games, ones that I didn't expect to love, but I wanted to really talk about my top five favorite WizKids board games, the ones that I can't get enough of that, you know, if someone wants to whip it out at game night and say, hey, you want to play this? I will always say yes. The games that I think of first when I think of what are the best games from WizKids. And those are the games that I wanted to talk about today. Because uh, a lot of them, a couple of them I think are really underrated gems that deserve much more appreciation than they got. And so I hope that when I talk about these games, you will learn something new, maybe you'll fall in love with a new game, you'll be interested in a new game, and that's that's all I could ever ask for, is, you know, you guys checking out a new game that you didn't expect to love and really enjoying it. So we are going to start off with one that, of course, you all know this by now, it is not Waddle, but I do love Waddle. Actually, Noodles did tell me that he wanted me to say that Waddle is one of his top five favorite WizKids board games, so... That's his t number two, he said, Waddle, because he's in it. Number one, he said, is, yep, Smash City, because he likes to be a kaiju and he likes to stomp on buildings. Take from that what you will. But my first one of my top five, and these aren't in any order. These are just the order that I kind of learned them in, which is why I'm talking about them in this order. Number one is, of course, Fantasy Realms. 
Now, if you've watched this show uh, a couple times, you probably know that I really love Fantasy Realms because Fantasy Realms hold a special place in my heart. The first WizKids game I ever, ever played was actually Fantasy Realms. My friend and I were at Gen Con and we were hanging out and we were kind of, I was kind of like, you know, do you have anything on hand that's like 30 minutes that we could just hang out and play? And she had a copy of Fantasy Realms on her and we played it and I was like, this is so great. Uh, it's so much fun. So for those of you not familiar with Fantasy Realms, Fantasy Realms is a super simple card game. It's a three to six player card game and the rules are simple. You draw a card and then you discard a card. And the goal of the game is to build the most powerful possible hand and score the most points with your seven card hand or eight card hand, is, as is the case with the new expansion, um, to have the highest scoring hand of seven cards or eight cards possible at the end of the game. And the way you do that is by drawing cards and discarding cards. And you can draw cards from the deck or from the middle of the table, uh, which is where you discard your cards to. So when you discard your card, it goes in the middle of the table and anyone can pick it up on their turn. And the cards impact each other in different ways, uh, depending on you know the card itself, the suit of the card, the different suits will impact each other in different ways. And it's, it, it's such a fun game and it's so easy to learn. You're, you're gonna pick it up in five minutes, not even that. It's, it's like 60 seconds, okay, I understand this game. And that's what I really love about it. It's easy for anyone to learn. It's easy for anyone to play. It's a little bit challenging probably the very first time you play to wrap your head around all the things that the cards can do with each other and all the ways they interact with each other. But once you kind of get there with it, it it's just, it's such a great time. And it has so much replayability because the cards will, you know, you're always gonna get different combinations of cards and you're gonna have to strategize differently you know, every game. And that's what I really like about it. And like I said, you can use the Fantasy Realms scoring app, wizkids.io slash capital F, capital R, capital A, P, P. Um, and I just, I can't recommend this one enough. It's only $19.99. It's a great price point. It's a small box too, so you can carry it in your pocket and, or in your purse if you're me. Um, which I mean, I could, I have a giant purse. I could carry a lot of things. I could carry like a normal size board game in my purse, but you might not be able to. Fantasy Realms is great for both options. Uh, Ministry of Dice. What you actually want to do is head to wizkids.io slash fantasy realms app or FR app. So I'm going to actually send that in the chat right now. So you .io slash FR app. If you go to that link that I just sent, uh, you will be able to have an online web app that has the scoring for the game that was created actually to go along with the Cursed Horde uh, because of all of the new stuff it added. So check that site out uh, if you want, uh, you know, an easy resource for scoring because I believe the WizKids app has not yet been updated with the expansion, but this is fully updated and has everything from the Cursed Horde for you. Now the Cursed Horde, which I've been talking about a lot, but I haven't really super clarified, is a brand new expansion for Fantasy Realms. And it adds uh, three new suits as well as cursed items. So it adds cursed items, which will give you super powerful bonuses, but then also they come at a cost. So you have to kind of weigh whether or not you you will benefit from, you know, these cursed items in, in your hand, whether or not you think that the, the cost is worth it. Um, and then three new suits, you have buildings, you have outsiders, and you have the undead, which all add much more flavor and, you know, are doing new and different things uh, in your hand. And it's, it's a super great expansion. It does a beautiful job of expanding on the base game, and I absolutely highly recommend it. It's $14.99, uh, so uh, you would pay about $34.99 if you wanted both the base game and the expansion together, which I think is a really great price point for something with so much replayability. So I highly recommend it. Fantasy Realms, Fantasy Realms the Cursed Horde. Fantasy Realms is three to six players. It plays in 20 minutes. So it's also a super quick game. It's really nice. Uh, and it is one of my top five favorite with kids games. Moving on to the next one, another one that if you know, if you've been watching this show for a while, you almost definitely expected. And that is Ubuntu. I, this is another one. So this one, I actually, I played it 
before I played Fantasy Realms. Wait, did I? No, I played it after I played Fantasy Realms. Yeah. So, Bamuntu is another one that I played before I joined WizKids as a company. I actually demoed this before WizKids ever signed it to produce, and I absolutely loved it back then. And uh, when we released it, uh, we actually were in the process of releasing it when I started at WizKids, and I got so excited because I had so much fun demoing it uh, with the designer, Tim Blank. And so, uh, you know, it just got better when, you know, they released, we released the full edition of it. It's, it's such a fun game. In Bumuntu, you are a tribal leader trying to win the favor of the animals by making your way through the jungle. You are trying to collect animal tiles and they do different things. So as you're moving across the animal tile, you can either choose to move one space in any direction or use the ability of the animal tile and each animal tile's ability will move you in different ways. So for example, the flamingos allow you to jump up into the air and then land on another flamingo because you're flying. Um, or the rhinoceros runs you to one end of the board. Uh, so different fun thematic things like that. Um, the art is of course really beautiful. It's very simplistic, but it's inspired by the African folklore, by the art um, from that culture. And it's just, it's a really fun little game. Um, it's a one that plays in 30 minutes too, so it's it's great. I also find that like younger players really like this because it doesn't feel as maybe pandering as like, you know, really super games targeted towards kids can sometimes feel to them, the games they're kind of used to playing. Whereas this one, like, it's still accessible to younger audiences, but it doesn't feel, it doesn't treat them like kids. This game isn't, it's not designed for kids, but it is a great option for younger players um, if you feel comfortable introducing this to them. I think it's it's a really great game. Um, I could not recommend it more. Bumuntu, I mean, just look at how cool it is, how just comfortable it is on the table. It's got, I don't know why I said comfortable. Guys, I'm having a day today. Uh, it looks awesome on the table. I couldn't remember the word table presence. That's two words. Uh, so I said comfortable, apparently. Um, it has great table presence. And what's cool about this, too, is that the scoring changes during the game. You'll have opportunities to change what each animal tile is worth. So when you are at the end of the game scoring all your collected animal tiles, some tiles you collected may be worth more than they were at the time you collected them, or they may be worth less. And that's one thing that also is really fun and adds an extra element to this game. Uh, it's $39.99, so it's a great price point. The tiles are really nice. They're like this hard, I think they're, I think they're acrylic. I'm not sure what the material is, but they have a nice feel in your hand too. So like it's, it's, it's good for someone who has like an interest in different kind of textures going on with the games. Cause I know that's something that a lot of people really enjoy is when games have a lot of texture to the, the components. And this one definitely has that. And it's, it's kind of like a leveled up board game version of chess with a little bit of a twist to it. That's that's how I like to describe the Muntu to people. And I would definitely say that it's worth checking out. It's so fun. I Like I said, I mean, it's my number two of my top five WizKids games. So clearly I love it and I do. And you will love it too if you have not checked this one out already. Now the next one, I don't, I don't think I've talked about a lot on this show, but um, I really love it and I'm excited to talk about it. And that is Magic the Gathering Ravnica Inquisition. Uh, so now my background before I came to WizKids, my background in board gaming actually stems from social deduction games. Now, for those of you not familiar with what that is, social deduction games are games like, you know, Werewolf or Mafia, where players are trying to figure out who maybe the betrayer is or trying to solve for uh, who's going... There, there's a lot of backstabbing in social deduction games and a lot of trying to solve a mystery but with other players working against you secretly. Hi, Alan. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any news today about Dice Masters to talk about, um, but keep an eye on our social media. That's where we're going to post any and all updates about any upcoming products for any product lines. Little Big Thumbs, thank you. Welcome to the show. The artwork, I'm sure you're meaning for Bumuntu. I probably missed that. It's gorgeous. Um, 
Absolutely. Uh, getting back to Ravnica Inquisition, it is, like I said, a social deduction game. So you're kind of working individually, trying to figure out who among you is maybe not trustworthy, uh, while also trying to solve the mystery without getting eliminated. So in Magic the Gathering Ravnica Inquisition, you join the Gatewatch um, or pledge your loyalty to Nicol Bolas. So you're going to get one of two kind of teams. Um, and then each player, uh, each kind of words are hard today. Uh, each player is going to have a card with, um, representing, I can't, I'm, yeah. see, I haven't streamed for so long that now I'm not, that's okay. So players are going to get a card representing one of two colors, uh, so they're different, uh, cities and each city represents two colors from Magic the Gathering. Justice, hello, welcome to the show. Um, they're also gonna get a card that indicates that they're either a Gatewatch loyalist or an agent of Bolas, and that's gonna be a secret card, so uh, you're only gonna look at it and then put it face down. The agents of Bolas will know who each other are, but the Gatewatch loyalists will not know who the agents of Bolas are. And then during the game, players elect leaders of each of the five colors. So uh, someone who has, say, a red and green card and a red and white card, those players can be elected to be red because they're both, they've are both they both got the red color represented on their city card. Um, so the leader options are always going to be elected from among the players who have that color on their city card. And every player will have two colors represented, so they have two opportunities to be elected uh, as leaders. Um, they're guilds. I don't know why I keep saying cities. This one I haven't gotten a chance to play in a while because it's a five to ten player game, so because of that it's one that I have, because of quarantine, I haven't been able to play, so I guess I'm a little rusty on the, the terms and the rules, but I, 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 I still love this game and I can't wait to get this one back to the table. Um, each color leader has a special power that they can use to further their goals, so players have to be careful when they are voting because if you know, one of the agents of Bolas gets um, one of the leadership roles, then they can uh, use it to eliminate the Gatewatch loyalists and ultimately win the game. Once all the color leaders have been elected, a vote is held to eliminate one player. And then uh, if the agents of Bolas were all eliminated, then the Gatewatch wins. Otherwise, the agents of Bolas win. So you want to make sure that when you're electing leaders in this game, you're not electing agents of Bolas because they can uh, eliminate you. And there's cards that do different things. So for example, the black leader's ability is that they get to choose a player when they're elected. And then at the end of the game, before the final vote is revealed, they flip over their card that the, the player they selected and that player is eliminated um, because they were assassinated. So it's like you put out an assassination contract for that player. Um, another example is that uh, the red player gets to eliminate someone immediately as soon as they're elected, uh, but they're always elected last, I believe. So this is a Magic the Gathering themed game. It is a social deduction game, but it's one that I think, even if you're not a Magic the Gathering player, this is one that you're gonna love. I, When this game first came out, I brought it to a con local convention and I brought it to my social deduction player friends because, you know, there's... At that particular convention, everyone knows me. I'm the social deduction girl. I know all the social deduction games. And I was like, we should play this. And they were all kind of like, oh, we don't play Magic the Gathering. We're not going to understand it. And I insisted. We got it on the table. And they were absolutely in love. Uh, my friends stole my copy, so I had to buy a new one. Um, because they just loved it so much. And it's... It's absolutely a wonderful game. It's such a great, clever social deduction game. And it's one that I, it, it's it's one of like my favorite social deduction games now. So, you know, if I'm having a game night with friends when things reopen and they're gonna be like, which social deduction games are you gonna bring? This is absolutely gonna be at the top of my list because it adds a lot more strategy to than a lot of traditional social deduction games. It's got a lot more going on. It's got more intrigue. Players aren't always immediately eliminated, and because of that, uh, they feel, you know, players feel like they have more agency, they can, you know, do more interesting things than they normally would have been able to do in some of the more traditional social deduction games where eliminations happen almost constantly. I cannot recommend this one enough. Ravnica Inquisition 
is just an awesome game and it's only $14.99 and for such a great social deduction experience that price point is amazing so it's absolutely something that you should check out uh magic the gathering ravnica inquisition five to ten player social deduction game ages 14 and up and it plays in 15 to 30 minutes and most social deduction games are a lot longer there are ones that are designed to be shorter but this hits that sweet spot of just not too long it's just the right length to get really excited about it um there's a lot of tension in the air when you play and in, in the good way in the good social deduction way where everyone's kind of leaning in hoping to see you know what happens at the end of the game and there's that always that big burst of excitement when one team wins or loses and it's it's one of the most fun social deduction experiences i've had in quite a while was when i played this game for the first time and every time subsequent to that it's it's awesome um so that is magic the gathering ravnica inquisition and next up we have da -da 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 -da, etten so let me tell you all about etten etten was a game that did not get enough love because it released in March of 2020. So it had kind of the worst possible timing. Sorry. Kind of had the worst possible timing and it's so disappointing because this game is awesome. In Etten, you're leading one of eight nations to victory in a series of fast paced wars, but you won't do it alone. Players make pairs of allies to play the game like a two headed Etten and you share units and strategies as you face your enemies on the other side. This game is really awesome. And this is a game that when I first, you know, when they were like, hey, Jessa, we're releasing this new game, let's play it. And I was like, okay, I got to play it before it released. Um, I wasn't particularly interested in it from the sound of how it sounded. And then I played it and it was so good. Guys, it is, it's, it's a game that like, I don't know that I could really describe how much fun it is because you just have to play. It's it's a drafting game that you play with an ally, so it's a co-op drafting game, but it's also, it's more team-based than co-op, so, I mean, it's, it's technically co-op, but you don't feel limited by being on a team because I feel like a lot of games where you're on a team you kind of, you, you can sometimes feel held back by, you know, having to work around your teammates. And I never have felt this way, that way, playing Etten. Etten, I think, is the perfect kind of amount of cooperation while still having some independence and some, you know, some single, some solo agency too. Um... So there are eight nations in the game, and each nation has a different focus and play style. Justice, we are looking at five games today, so this is number four. I have one more game to talk about, uh, and then I'm going to talk about my bedazzled red slot, and then that will be it for today. But we are still on Etten, which is so amazing and such a great game. Um, so, for example, the orcs have a strong have a series of strong but impulsive warriors while the Risen, who are kind of like the undead, use magic and sheer numbers. So it's very thematic in that way, and that's super fun. Um, you can kind of... You, you, you have a lot of really interesting interactions that happen in this game. So you only draft cards with the player to your left and your right, uh, one of whom is your ally and one of whom is your enemy. Though these decisions and outcomes of your battles affect everyone at the table sometimes, so you can actually, there's a lot, there's a lot of different kinds of interactions happening and a lot of unexpected things going on with this game. Um, you play in pairs. However, if you have an odd number of players, one player is actually a mercenary, mercenary na nation. Words are hard. Mercenary nation. So uh, if you have a mercenary nation in the game, one player actually gets to double their nation's size with additional recruits from the shared mercenary deck. So you don't, you know, even with an odd number of players, no one feels left out. No one feels like they're playing at a disadvantage. Um, this game is also, just to, as a heads up, it's from Ken Shannon. So if you know Ken Shannon, he's designed a couple games for us, and he's an awesome designer. He designed Maiden's Quest, which I love. Uh, he designed Tournament at Camelot and Tournament at Avalon. But this game, I think, is almost entirely unique. It does something interesting and different and fun with drafting. 
that I hadn't seen before it. And I'm so disappointed that it came out at a time where, you know, it got missed because of everything going on in the world. And I think that if this one, if you pick one game today to check out, make it Etten because it deserves so much love and it's it's awesome. And it's only $39.99. It's got a lot of components you see in this picture. There's there's a lot of stuff in it, so it's it's absolutely it's worth the price. It's got some great quality to the components. The art is really nice. It's really cool. And it plays two to eight players, so it can kind of play any any amount and you don't ever feel like it's too many or too few. Uh, it's a 60 minute game, so that it's a, again that nice sweet spot for a game night uh, if you want to get a couple different games in. And I also found that it was really easy to learn. I never found myself kind of confused when playing it. I always felt like there was enough explanation and it was uh, easy and comfortable to follow the rules. So, Etten is a great game. I love it, and I am bringing this one out when things open up. If it's not clear, every single one of these games I am bringing out when things open up again, because I love them all. So the last game on our list for today is one that, again, if you watch this show, you're expecting it, because I love it so much, and that is, of course, Hako Ona! I am a horror fanatic. I grew up watching Japanese horror movies and when I heard we were releasing Hako Ona, I was so stoked and the game absolutely lives up to the amazing creepy aesthetic that the art and the visuals and the graphic design suggest. So this is a localization of a Japanese game. It's got a few tweaks to it, but it's, you know, it was a game that was released and very popular in Japan and we're releasing it in the US. And in Hakaona, you are guests uh, trapped in a house with a ghost girl. And you are trying to escape the house. It's an asymmetrical hidden movement game. One player is the Hakaona or the ghost girl. And as you can see when the thing cycles back, I will mention it. Uh, of course it's that. Um, so one player is the Hakaona and she is on one of those tiles. You can kind of see in the bottom of this picture where there's like the square tiles on top of the larger room tiles. Here, you can see it here. And she is on under one of those tiles and she gets to move around the house uh, while players who are visitors have to look at under those tiles to try and get the items that they need to escape the Hakaona and get out of the house or put her spirit to rest um, or collect items to protect yourself but you have to look under those tiles. And if you look under the Hako Ona's tile, that's it, you're, you're dead. You join her team, you get to move around the tiles now too and help uh, the Hako Ona eliminate players um, and prevent them from escaping the house. It is so creepy, you guys. And another thing that I wanna talk about with this game is the movement mechanic. So you don't have to do this and I'll explain this in a second. That's the Hako Ona tile, by the way. Um, so, hi Tyler, there's no Hero Clicks news today, but thank you for tuning in. Please stick around. We got some cool stuff we're talking about today. Justice, so, okay, Betrayal is one of my favorite games, and I would say it's ish. Like, it's kind of like Betrayal after the haunt starts, but it's got a lot more, um, it's got a lot more kind of interesting things. I wouldn't say more interesting. It's like, it feels different from Betrayal, but if you really love Betrayal, you're really going to love this. That's kind of how I would put it. Betrayal is one of my all-time favorite games, and I definitely, you know, I when I first played Hakaona, I definitely felt very kind of some of the similar feel and vibe to it, but they're not the same game. Um, so the movement mechanic. So the way the movement mechanic for this game works, at the beginning of your turn, you have to uh, place, there is a tile that comes with the game. It has a little kind of bead on it, like half a bead. And you have to stack discs on top of uh, this tile. And you have to stack them in a way that you hope that they don't fall. Um, and this is called the noise mechanic. So you're trying to avoid making noise because if you make noise, the Hako Ona uh, is drawn towards where you are. So each turn, you, you can see the discs right here next to me right now. You stack the discs on top of that little bead on top of each other. 
And if this tower ever falls, the Hakuona immediately takes her turn. Uh, and everyone closes their eyes while the Hakuona moves through the house. Um, if you get to five discs stacked, uh, then also the Hakuona takes her turn immediately after that. Now, it doesn't seem that challenging on just a single tile with the bead, but the trick here is that the third tile is always going to, or third disc, is always going to be the disc with the little bead on it, so it makes it even more challenging because it's not just kind of one one thing throwing off the balance of the tower. Now you've got two physical components throwing off the balance. And it's, I've played games of this where everyone's just kind of leaning in slowly and holding their breath. And I remember one of the first times we played it at the office, someone walked in the room while someone was trying to stack and the entire room just turned and we're like, and it was, awesome and that's the kind of energy that this game generates that's the attention and excitement that this game generates and it is so cool and so much fun um and if the hakaona manages to eliminate all the players or make it impossible for them to leave the house uh everyone closes their eyes during her turn like i said she holds up the top of the box where it says game over and when everyone opens their eyes uh, they see that, and that is how you know that the game has ended if the Hako Ona wins, which I think adds more attention. I like to- I play the Hako Ona all the time because I really like that kind of enemy side of um, asymmetrical games. And I like to hold it in whoever the person's face is that is kind of the jitteriest person because they're always startled and it's a lot of fun. Um, if you're not big on dexterity elements, which I know dexterity elements aren't for everyone, I will say that there is a card-based version of the new mechanics. Um, and the noise mechanics, and that allows players who maybe aren't, um, you know, they have dexterity problems or they're just not comfortable with, uh, that element, they can, you know, they're able to, um, they're able to still play and still get that tension. It's a little more randomized. It's not necessarily skill-based the way the dexterity element is, but it, you know, you still feel that tension. And almost it, almost adds more tension because you're not as in control of a card deck as you are, you know, when you're stacking things. It, it's a little less control, which is pretty cool. Um, but that was our last game, Haka Ona, I should mention. It's $29.99, it's a great price point. Plays in 90 minutes in three to five players, so it's a lot of fun if you like horror, if you like asymmetrical games, if you like games like Betrayal or Not Alone. I really love Not Alone too, and Haka Ona feels that way. Um, it feels like Betrayal meets Not Alone, actually. That's how I would describe Haka Ona. Um, definitely check this one out. It is so cool and so spooky um, and super fun. So that was my top five favorite WizKids games, Fantasy Realms, Bumuntu, Ravnica Inquisition, uh, Etten, and Hako Ona. Uh, they are great games. Um, I absolutely love them and think that they are all worth your time. If you love board games and you want to try something new, any of these are a great starting point for you. Definitely check them out. Uh, if you're new to board games, they're also pretty much all great for beginner board gamers. Um, you know, they all have a lot of flavor. I'm big on flavor in games, and I think all of them are really uh, great, flavorful games. Now, uh, I'm sorry, Justice, but check out the Fantasy Realms scoring app. I'll send the link again in the chat for y'all so you have it, because we now have a new scoring app to go with the Cursed Horde. Uh, definitely check that out. But now let me talk about my red slot. So like I said on Friday during V's Paint Night event stream, I talked about, I was in the chat, and I was talking about how I wanted to be Dazzle or Red Slud. I am a crafter. I love glitter. I love rhinestones. I have rhinestones right next to me here. I, I love sparkle. And I promised I would be Dazzle or Red Slud before my show on Tuesday. Unfortunately, I could not find any rhinestones small enough to do the job in person. So I ordered some. They are not here yet. So I have not been able to be Dazzle this Red Slud yet. But I wanted to show you all a mini that I have painted. Um as kind of a consolation um i will i promise i will show off the red slot hopefully next week it depends when my stones get here 
when the rhinestones get here i will you know i will show i will post pictures i will show it off on this show if you want to get the most up-to-date information on my bedazzling minis thing that i'm doing now uh make sure to follow me on social media at the underscore blackthorn um so uh that is on uh twitter excuse me that is on twitter uh, i'm on instagram and that's where you're going to be able to see that stuff um but i did want to show you a mini that i've painted real quick um so this is the second mini that i ever painted in my life i actually i painted it in 2019 because i had been invited to go on painting happy little minis uh for origins 2019 if you remember that stream it was kind of a mess i didn't do great with the paint because it, it wanted to do black and the black paint was watery and it was very disappointing and i was sad about that i'm gonna revisit that soon though there's a plan for that uh, but i painted this mini to practice it and uh so i thought it was really cool so this is my octopus mini that i painted he is blue and also purple and pink because i really like pink a lot um yeah i'm pretty proud of how this came out uh, i'm not the best painter i don't have the best dexterity i have dyspraxia so i'm not great with like fine detail but considering all of that i think i did a pretty great job come on there you go he's a little bit see-through because of the green screen but yeah so i i promised i would show you guys a mini and i am showing you a mini uh, but you definitely, I definitely will do this pink bedazzled red slide. I just need the, the stuff to do it. I promise you. But that is, of course, the end of our show. Thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out. You will have another show next week. Hopefully some exciting stuff going on. Uh, please feel free to, like I said, follow me on social media. I am on Twitter. I am on Instagram. I am on TikTok. I have not posted any TikToks yet, but I'm working on it. Uh, I'm a little bit old and bad at TikTok. Um, I am on Facebook as Jessa Blackthorn. Um, do tune in tomorrow to V's show. That is Mini Mayhem. Uh, I know the event hasn't been scheduled, but it is happening. Uh, she's going to be showing off the unpainted Sky, Sky Coach, which is really cool. I've seen it. It's awesome. Um, and she's also going to be talking about the Dire Troll Paint Night event. So definitely check that out. Uh, please feel free to follow WizKids on social media. We are WizKids or WizKids Games all over the internet, so check that out. We are WizKids Official on Twitch. If you're not watching on Twitch, that's how you find our Twitch. Um, and I hope that you all have a wonderful and pleasant week. Um, Noodles loves you. I love you. Break a leg. Have a great week, everyone. Goodbye.